Previously from the Hood Blogger. During Av and them trial, and he went came in there ran and then was like yelling out in the courtroom. Which, you know, even with doing that type of stuff, you know, I don't know what you think that the results would be with, you know what I'm saying, with doing that. So as he leave, he go to the market and he went to the market and actually Mayor Malik was with him, you know, and when he had left, you know, them folks had, they ran down on him. They Hey, yo, this SV Twitch, the hood blogger. You already know how I carry it, man. Shout out to everybody that been rocking with the content. I appreciate y'all, man. You already know what it is. Man, there have been a lot of returning viewers, man. Like 65% of the returning viewers, bro. All I ask, man, if you tap into the content, bro, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell so you will be updated every time Sutton drop, bro. It also helps with the channel algorithm, and it's a lot coming up with the channel, bro. Just make sure y'all stay tuned. Other than that, man, hit the like button. But we're going to get straight into it, bro. Today, man, a highly requested video. Actually, my brother just previously hit me up like, bro, you're doing your thing on the channel, bro, but you got to get Leaf on there. You know, talk about the Leaf situation. So shout out to little bro, man. But we're just going to get into it, bro. As far as Leaf Ward, man, to me, Leaf Ward is, you know, one of the special newer artists coming up. And I say that to say this. We know that it's the, the you know, music change, bro. Music changes a lot. And people are definitely talented. You know, I, I respect the, the new wave. But when they come to Philly, Philly, we always had a different sound than everybody. And we coming into the times where it don't matter where you from, Philly, Atlanta, Chicago, a lot of people are using, you know, certain terms and lingo and music is starting to sound similar. It don't matter where you from. But Leaf War is one of them guys where even though he has a new wave, new style of music, you can still hear Philly in him. You dig what I'm saying? Like he rap. Like a Philly guy rap, you dig what I'm saying? He 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 talked different. I don't really hear him harmonizing or, or doing too much on his tracks. He pretty much, you know, give you stories, uh, uh, his upbringing and other people's stories and things that, you know, he witnessed as growing up in the streets of Philly. So just to get into it, we know Leaf Ward, man, he from West Philly. It don't matter what part of the city you from, it get crazy, but West Philly definitely always had a reputation of, you know, getting money, but also getting busy. As Leaf stated in previous interviews, he jumped off the porch around 10. Now, we know when you first say that you jump off the porch, it's like going through the neighborhood and on top of being a kid, you witness other things and these other things give you a different perspective on life. I remember being a kid when we used to chill, play manhunt, you know, little games like that, look for garden snakes, all that little type of stuff. And then as time went on, we start to see other things, other ways of living. We start seeing people that was, you know, cool or, you know, being looked at as being cool because of certain things they was doing in the streets. And one of the things that you always need, even from a young age, it's money. It start off with getting dollars and five dollars and stuff like that just to go to the corner store. Then to go from the corner store to, oh, I need them J's. I need this. I need that. And a lot of us, whether you come from a single parent household, you can have both parents and they could be, you know, working class people. But keeping up with bills and living circumstances, they might not be able to cover things that you want. They give you what you need. You might get a, a, a fresh pair of forces or something, but everybody wearing the J's too. So those type of things make you as a kid. I want that. You know, I, I got to have that. I got to have those. And these are the things that leads a lot of people in the streets at a young age where it start off hustling, 
you get bundles from old heads, you know, 130s, all that. And then after a while, that becomes a way of you learning to survive. Now, with the hustling and getting into the streets, eventually drama going to come, whether it's from a different block, you know, that's in competition with you, all different types of issues. So you start growing with these badges on you. So as time went on, you know, Leaf, he was surviving, bro. Regular guy from Philly, you know, and, you know, coming up, you know, he was definitely as every child was at one point in the time, an innocent child, but eventually the streets grabbed him. But even with the streets grabbing him, he continued to go through school, finish high school and went to college, IEP, I believe. And he stayed at how him being in college, he started seeing people that he was beefing with. You know, his homie might've got his life taken. That homie on the other side might've got their life taken. So it was damn near impossible, damn near impossible to concentrate on your schoolwork. Whereas though it took a lot of discipline for him to even make it to college. I know a lot of guys that's not even in the streets that finished high school and didn't go to college. So for him to go to college, that was showing you that he was trying to do the right thing, but other things had got in his way. Now, time moves on. He's in college. You know, he had like a low grade point average in college. While he was in college, you know, he dropped a, he dropped a banger. He dropped a song and went viral. At this time, he like, oh, I can do this. You dig what I'm saying? I'm not succeeding in college right now. I'm going to just chase this, you know, these dreams of being a rapper. So he pushed the music. Music was going crazy. You know, um, Leaf was carrying the city by himself for a minute. You know, he, he was he was a breath of fresh air. You know, and with that being said, on top of having issues in the streets, when you become even successful, you know, more of a public figure that also brings more en enemies and, and other issues. So, you know, he had actually caught a case, you know, in and out. As we all know, PNB had bailed him out, paid for a lawyer and all that. Peace and paradise to PNB. But after all these things happen he get home he get back on track he eventually moved to atlanta now him moving to atlanta was a smart move because he had to get away from his normal stopping grounds that's one thing about philly is some people might look at it like it's kind of a big city but you know philly is real small even though you could be somebody that live out southwest and and the next person might live out germantown and y'all might never cross paths that's just how it go but at the same time it's easy to bump into somebody you could bump into somebody coming from you know the parole office or bump into somebody downtown just certain areas or certain places you might bump into somebody and nowadays how the city is moving people was going everywhere with they sticks on them so august 16th 2023 leaf ward you know and a female that he was with i don't know if it was his girl you know what that relationship was but he was definitely with a female and he basically went to this spot it's called bahama breeze now for those of y'all that don't know i seen a couple blogs talk about it and say that you know, he went to a, a restaurant in Philly. Um, Bahama Breeze is not in Philly. It's on the outskirts. But it's only probably about a 40-minute, 35, 40-minute ride outside of Philly. Now, this is what I don't know if anybody touched up on, but I want to touch up on it. He goes to the restaurant, and when he goes to the restaurant, surveillance catches him driving and pulling into the restaurant and going inside of the restaurant with the female that he was with. So as he trying to spin out, they already towing the car, everything. And, you know, they said that he ran back into the restaurant. Now, a lot of people was like, yo, what is bro doing with, you know what I'm saying? What he driving to Johnny for? Now, what I think happened is 
if he didn't physically purchase that, he probably got it from one of his homies or something like that or somebody that he knew. Like, bro, let me hold that scat pack. Now, if anybody paying attention, you know that, you know, charges, scat packs, Hellcats, that's a vehicle that's like one of the top you know, vehicles that's, that people still, you dig what I'm saying? Like, they people take them joints left and right and they take them fast. I've seen videos of people taking, you know, Hellcats and pulling up in another one and just getting into the car, getting it in neutral and pushing the car off. So they be high on them scat packs and and what people was doing is, you know, they 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 taking them to shops, they getting the ignition and all that switch and reselling them joints, coming up with fake titles. So me personally, I don't think that he was driving that car intentionally knowing that it was stolen. I think somebody burnt him as far as, you know, acting like they had it for sale and it was stolen. Now, if y'all pay attention, a lot of people are reselling them joints. And I know for a fact that he wasn't driving in that joint knowing it was stolen because if anybody knows about King of Pressure, and if you come in from Philly, you know you gotta go up 76 and 422. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be state troopers all up and down that. So I doubt that he drove that willingly knowing that it was stolen because you just asking for a high speed chase. Once them cops scan that VIN and all of that, it's gonna pop up stolen and they gonna hit them sirens. So I don't think that he had any knowledge that that car was stolen. When he comes out, he runs back in the restaurant. Allegedly, they said he threw a burner. Now, how I see it is, what I was always taught from, you know, going in and out of jail is, I actually had got booked. I courted a burner case and, you know, my Sully was telling me like, bro, you should have got that joint off you. I'm like, you know, it was broad daylight. The cop was chasing me. And if I would have tried to get it off me, he would have aired me out nine times out of 10 because all they would have said was I was pulling it off my waistband. You dig what I'm saying? But if you get out of the police sight, you got to get whatever you got on you off you. That always give you a better standing of beating it. So that burner, they didn't pull it off of him. And I don't know how they do in the county, but I know a lot of times like out in Philly and stuff like that, Ballistics, that costs bread. So if you got just the possession of a firearm, nine times out of 10, they, they don't run fingerprints on it. Unless they feel like they, they pick up a gun and it match the caliber of a murder that was just committed in that area. That's the only time I heard it of somebody getting caught with a strap and ballistics was being ran. Unless she was already, you know, getting looked at for dealing with a body or something like that. I don't even think that they'd be running ballistics on attempts if they got like a live witness. You know, it's up to that person. Matter of fact, I don't think they run ballistics on attempts. They gotta be like a body, you know, um, for attempts. If they got a live witness, they gonna count on that person to testify or whatever. So, you know, with me saying that, it's like the strap wasn't on them. The proper lawyer can fight that and they also do have, you know, what they call illegal search and seizure. Now, I don't know if that applies because they was on him for that Johnny that he had. So I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not no lawyer, so I don't know the angle that that could be, but I know the burner wasn't on him. And they also said it was a, a quantity of pills that was in the car. Now, where was those pills at in the car is the question. But one thing we got to remember is that that car was also reported stolen his lawyer can also i believe defend that and say the car wasn't stolen so wherever i mean the car wasn't his it was stolen so wherever that car got stolen from them pills could have already been in that car now as crazy as it sound you'd be surprised how lawyers arguments are depending on the lawyer and you know, when you, especially if you're going head up with the judge, the judge got to, you know, respect the argument. Whether or not that this person could be, they could be looking at him as he's guilty. 
the loyal argument can save them. I've seen people get caught with, with straps and and beat the case illegal search and seizure because the officer didn't have the right to search him. You know, what was the probable cause of pulling up on them? And oh, it's a whole bunch of loopholes in the legal system. Now, what I wanted to get into is, you know, what's being said on the internet as far as the feds picking up the case. I was looking at and trying to do the research. I'm not 100% sure if his case was picked up by the feds. I'm not sure if it was or if it wasn't. But what I can say, if the feds picked it up, now that's a whole different, that's a whole different monster. His best bet is to do is like, you know, um, take what they offer you, do not take it to trial. If it wasn't picking up by the feds, it don't matter if he had a 30 or if he had a switch on him, cause state is different. Well, what I can say, I know when you get booked in Philly for them Jones, if it, I, I know a lot of people that went down for switches in Philly and as much as they hype them up, they treat them like regular gun cases if you're dealing with them in the state. I've seen people get out lack of prosecution and stuff like that, lack of evidence, and got booked with joints with switches. They be home in a year, a year and a half, dismissed in preliminary. Now, he's in Montgomery County is where he got arrested at. What I want y'all to know about Montgomery County is you can get caught with two ounces allowed and be sitting in a county jail for, for 20 months because it's a slow process in Montgomery County for some reason. They had you, I, I, I know plenty of people that court cases in the county and they sat for a minute fighting them Jones. So if the feds didn't pick it up, then that means he's going to have a long process period of just fighting that front, that front case. Now, whether or not he got a bell, he did have a bell, but if y'all never been arrested before, what y'all need to know is when you get a bell, if you are on parole or probation or something like that, they put it what they call a detainer on you. So if I got a $5,000 bell, I can pay it. But then I still got to see my back judge and my back judge can keep that detainer on me for one for, you know, coming in uh, to contact with another cop, coming in contact with police enforcement. But I've seen some people get their detainers lifted. So depending on who his back judge is, that could be a situation and his his folks might be like, it's no point of even paying the bill. We just need to focus on your lawyer. So until I hear an update or if y'all have proof, you know, drop it in the comment and let me know what the situation is, the proof of him, if the feds even pick that case up. Like I said, I seen it on the vlogs and all that. But I haven't seen physical evidence that his case has been picked up by the feds. Now, a lot of people is going to put stories out there because since Leaf was booked, he didn't do like, you know, some people might give you an interview from the county, you know, and update you. Right now, he's silent because he know he got a lot on his plate and he probably don't want to say the wrong things over the phone. So he just focusing on his situation. So like I said, if he's fighting that case and he's not in the feds, he will still be in there for a long time just fighting that case dealing with the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania system. Because it's crazy that they stretch those cases out. If the letter boys did pick it up, then that's a problem. What makes it unfortunate is he also had warrants in other areas. I believe he had to join out Philly and maybe one somewhere else. So his best bet if he didn't go to the feds is to try to get everything consolidated and maybe he can get like a five to ten for everything you know he can he can get a three to six for one charge five to ten for this keep everything within the five to ten guidelines consolidate everything and just serve everything you know what i'm saying consecutive consecutive you know you don't want a bow-legged charge now i want y'all to drop a comment below do y'all think that this is going to you know hurt leaf ward career even if he gets let's just say a three to six 
or a five to ten. You know, sometimes it's hard to, to bounce back after the, after you come home and stuff like that. But if he get like a three to six, I, I he come home in three years, I think he's still gonna be real popular. He come home in five years, it's also possible because you know he had a big name. He just gotta come back and, and, and drop that heat. But definitely Free Leaf Ward, man. Um, SV Twist, the hub blogger, man. Make sure y'all sub. And let me know, man. Drop a comment. Let me know what y'all think about this situation. And if anybody got proof that, you know, Leaf is in the feds, then drop it in the comment, man. Let me know where I can, you know, find these facts at. Because I couldn't find these jaws. And if that is true, then, you know, I'll do a part two on it. And then we could, you know, talk about that. But y'all already know how I carry it.